Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Today, my Criara Guide. Also known as just Armadil, he is the appointed leader for Armadil's forces in the God Wars dungeon. Unlike the other bosses in the area, Kree can only be fought with ranged and magic weapons, both of which we will check out. With less variety to worry about, let's see how to dispose of the Winged General in the fastest and safest way possible. Ladies and gentlemen, if you find this video useful, consider subscribing with notifications on and dropping a fat like for the YouTube algorithm. If you want more guidance on your way to some expensive armadillo drops, join our Discord with the link in the description. To get into the God Wars dungeon, you need partial completion of the Troll Stronghold quest, or the easy combat achievements for a Gomel's Hilt 1, which will teleport you right near the entrance. To access the Armadillo encampment, you will need a Myth Grapple and any type of crossbow along level 70 range. As we will see in just a few seconds, you might want to have a higher level, so these requirements may not be an issue whatsoever. By finishing the quest to making friends with my arm, you will be able to build an Eternal Fire just after the obstacles blocking the initial area. It will prevent your stats and run energy from being drained right before you go into the dungeon. Finally, I recommend both the Desert Treasure 1 for additional healing after the main fight thanks to blood spells, and the Mage Training Arena to unlock bones to peaches so you can bring tablets, since all of the monsters here drop bones when defeated. Like we said before, melee is completely out of the question for Kriara, but he is so tanky that we are going to up the requirements a little bit. To give it a try, I recommend minimum 85 ranged with decent magic and defense levels for blood spells and survival. For quicker KC with any weapon of your choice, bump those to 95. Kree is the only boss where we don't need to run around like a headless chicken, but decent agility level is always useful. This time around, the minimum gear setup I recommend is the Bofa and the Crystal Armor, along with standard ranged gear you should already have at this point. Copy as much of the gear and the inventory as possible, but be advised that after trying this myself, even the super accurate bow of Ferdinian, Ferdinand, however you want to pronounce it, can noodle quite often. Don't forget magic items, bones to beaches, and as many healing items as you want when you start learning. The main method we will look at today consists of Chinchampas, Ancient Dehyde, Necklace of Anguish, Ring of Suffering, and if you have more money, a Twisted Buckler will go perfect with this setup. If you can't afford one, prioritize defensive items in the form of a crystal shield. I bring a dragon crossbow with diamond bolts for chip damage when not using chins, and I will show you how to utilize it during the mechanics and live KC. The best way to deal with Kriara is with a Tumekin Shadow. Unlike Bandos and Zami, where you might be able to get a few KC without it, doing Kree with magic without a shadow is going to be straight up in thing. If you don't have Ancestral, Virtus Robes will do fine, and this time we have more inventory space since we are not bringing two combat styles. Don't forget all of the extra items like your ecumenical key, Zaros piece if you want to bank at max, and many more. In order to get to the God Wars dungeon, I recommend teleporting to Trollheim with a teleport tablet since we will be rocking the ancient spellbook. Go down the mountain and then north through this passage for which you need either 60 agility or 60 strength. Alternatively, you can use a Gomel's Hill to teleport to right before the rock. Go through and then down the hole. The Armadillo encampment can be found directly south, so equip your Myth Grapple and Crossbow, and pray range to protect against minions in case you brought an Armadillo Blessing. Just for Armadillo, I will include a pretty cool method to bring a few more items. If you have a Fletching Cape, you can bring it with you, drop stuff on the ground, and search it for a Myth Grapple and Crossbow. Make your way across, and juggle your items so you end up dropping the Grapple and the Crossbow before your trip, finally giving one of the worst 99 capes a good use. You need a maximum of 40 Armadillo Essence to go through the door, going down with completed tiers of combat achievements. If you don't want to do this, you can bring an Ecumenical Key instead, which you can obtain from the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon Monster as drops. You can have a maximum of 5 in your bank, and when you use them to enter a God Wars Dungeon boss room, the key will be consumed. The Kriara method I will show you is so simple that you don't need any plugins whatsoever. We are even ditching ground markers and tile packs, so for it, the only thing I recommend is boss timers to know exactly when he is spawning, so you can prepare. Other than this, use whatever PVM plugin you'd like, such as boost information, timers, and so on. Kriara's mechanics are pretty simple, but damage can stack rather quickly. Unlike the other God Wars dungeon bosses, he can attack with all three combat styles. The thing you want to avoid at all costs is his ranged attack, which is why we will protect from missiles throughout the entire fight. This looks like a great tornado, and it's what he will use most commonly throughout the fight. He can also use light blue tornadoes, which are on screen for just a fraction of a second per attack, which is why I only learned about this when doing research for this video. Since we will have pretty good magic defense, this won't hit too often, even with magic gear. 
Both range and mage hits can knock you back and stun you for a few ticks, so it's advised to camp corners of the room. The third attack is what makes the Chinchampa strategy possible. Whenever you are not targeting Kriara, either by ignoring it or targeting one of his minions, he will hit you with a melee attack. When you focus him, he will only use either ranged or magic. The Chinchampa method works as follows. Go to any corner of the room and let both the Kree and the melee minion fly right next to you. No matter their position, you will attack the minion and as soon as you see the attack animation, click on the Kriara. Wait 2 ticks and attack the melee minion right before your Chinchampa attack cycle resets. Remember that these have an attack speed of 3 ticks, so the trick is melee minion Kriara, melee minion Kriara, melee minion Kriara, and so on. Now, 99% of the time, the melee minion will die before Kree is even at half HP. Equip any additional ranged weapon you brought like a crossbow, bofa, or even a blowpipe, and you can attack Kree whenever possible, walking under him when your attack speed is not on cooldown. Just be advised that you're not going to be doing a ton of damage. After a few seconds, the melee minion will respawn, so go back to any corner of the room and repeat the process and Kree will most likely be dead for the second cycle. From here on out, use blowpipe specials on the mage minion if possible, or simply deal with it as soon as you can. And just like all the God Wars dungeon bosses we have seen so far, stack the melee and ranged minion together, freeze them in place, and finish them off using Blood Barrage. If you're not at full HP yet, grab the 4 or 5 bones around you, and turn them into peaches for 32 or 40 free HP thanks to your bones to peaches tabs. Wait for Kriara to respawn, and then repeat all of it until you run out of supplies. So now that we know the basics, time to put it all together one final time to talk about everything I'm thinking with the timing for both the melee minion and walking under Kriara. And now for what I believe is the simplest, the cheapest, and, well, most efficient way to kill Kriara with Black Chinchampas, bring the gear and inventory that you can see, of course, adapting to what you have and what may be a little bit more expensive, number one being the Twisted Buckler. I do believe that the Ring of Suffering is a little necessary here, and as you have already heard, I highly recommend being on a Slayer task on an Avian Seas uh, monster in order to deal as much damage as possible, because without it, this can get a little sus. My quick prayers are going to be ranged and the rigor. I'm going to go into the private instance and the very first thing I want to do is go to the corner. I am going to say out loud what I'm like kind of thinking and then I'm going to explain why. So let them stack together and then attack the minion. That wasn't correct. Attack minion and then Kriara. Minion Kriara. Minion Kriara. Minion Kriara. And you want to attack the minion right before the tick is about to... Uh, you know, right before the Chinchampa is about to launch. And when you kill it, now you want to walk under Kree with the Diamond Dragon Bolts to deal, hopefully, a little bit of damage. We are waiting for the melee minion to come back online because, as you can see, the Diamond Bolts are not really doing too much. And the Chinchampa, what the Chinchampa is doing is basically rolling damage off of the melee minion's defense. And then that damage is going to be, I would say, collateral for Kree himself. And yeah, as you can see, the crossbow is not really doing a lot of work, but uh, it could potentially work for a little bit of chip damage. But uh, here we are, just attack Kree, walk under, and then when the melee minions spawn, re-equip your Chinchampas, and then do melee minion Kriara, melee minion Kriara. This is basically going to make it so whenever you are attacking Kriara, it is not going to uh, target you with, I believe, melee damage. And, um, yeah, you're basically going to skip out on, you know, a lot of, like, panic eating, which I should be doing right now, because, uh, I am being damaged quite a lot, but there we go. That is Kriara done, and what I want to do now, take care of the melee minion, and you can even use your blowpipe special on the major, and here, what I would like to do is just, um, you know, prayer flick, and there we go, that's perfect. Okay, so Kriya about to spawn, ranged and rigor, and then uh, do absolutely nothing, wait for them to come back. Or, well, I mean, come on to you. And then, range minion Kriara. Range minion Kriara. Range minion Kriara. And right before the Chinchampa attack is going to be launched, you want to attack the melee minion. Remember that the Chinchampas attack every three ticks? And that's exactly what you want to do. And after the melee minion responds, then you're, of course, going to rinse and repeat until your task is over. Then remember, that was incorrect. Melee Kriara. Minion Kriara. Minion Kriara, Minion Kriara, and so far and so but so on and so forth. There we go, that was a misclick, but that is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Just like all the God Wars dungeon bosses, let me show you other ways to deal with Armadil's general. 
like I said during the gear setup, even though the Bofa and Crystal Armor combo is super accurate, even with a Slayer Helmet you will still have some trouble tearing through Kriara's defenses. What I did was walking under every hit as I froze the melee minion, but if you're feeling lazy you could simply camp the corner. Be advised though that this means you will naturally take more damage, leading to shorter trips. The absolute best way to dispose of the big chicken will be with a very casual 1.4 billion GP item in the form of the Tumikin Shadow. Take the best magic gear you can afford and wait for the respawn in the corner of the room. I attack it once, equip a Kodai Ward to freeze the melee minion with higher accuracy, and then head towards Kriara to walk under whenever my shadow is on cooldown. You might only need to freeze the melee minion one more time, and even with the shadow's massive accuracy, kills can be as short as 40 seconds, and no longer than 2 minutes. For extra tips, remember that if you are wearing an armadil item, you can click on the altar every few minutes to fully restore prayer points plus 1. Check your game chat to see how long you have until you can do this again. Just like Bandos, all three minions have a pretty good chance to drop food like manta rays and tuna potatoes, so once you're comfy and get pretty decent starting RNG, you can bring a maximum of 3 brews for emergency and to juggle food as minions drop it. If you bring a Zaros item, you can teleport out of the room by using the altar, go to the ancient encampment of the God Wars dungeon, get enough Zaros KC to enter the preparation room before next, and bank there to keep all of your armadil essence so you don't have to use another ecumenical key. As we have seen before with God Wars dungeon bosses, their drops are absolute garbage and their GP per hour is purely carried by their uniques. Without them, and in my personal opinion, Kree's regular drops are the absolute worst in this place, averaging between 8 to 12 kgp per kill for a rough estimate of 150 to 250 kgp without uniques. With drops such as Mind Runes, Feathers, and the Dwarf Weed Seeds, you need a strong mental to stay in this place. If you stay though, all Armadil armor pieces go for a hefty price at the time of making this video, and even the Armadil hilt despite the AGS not being as dominant as it was before. With an amazing Kriara pet at an astonishing rate of 1 in 5000, this boss is surely a top tier moneymaker with just the right amount of RNG. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching and making it this far. If you did and would like to enter our weekly bond giveaway, tell me what your Armadil KC is and if you have gotten any uniques from him. Include the term RSN in your comment along your RuneScape username and we will pick a winner on Friday stream. I want to give a massive thank you to the wonderful channel members you see on screen, whose monetary pledge goes towards my wife, my puppy, and my mud house here in Mexico. If you like what I do here and want to join this list of legends, click on the join button below and see all of the cool perks you can get with a monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. Scapers, in the next one we have arguably the best video of the year, the 2024 Gear Progression Guide for All Styles. I hope you're as excited as I am, but for now, I hope you have an amazing day, have an amazing week. And I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.